they did a study of old people to see what led them to live a really long time. And in their study, they found that they had one thing basically in common besides good genetics. That's always number one. Bi Biology is always number one. But after that, it wasn't religion. It wasn't spiritual base. It wasn't nutrition. It wasn't geography. It wasn't height. The thing that kept people alive a long time was their ability to deal with change. Now think about it for a second, okay? If you live to be a hundred, you're burying everybody you know. You're burying your spouse. You might be burying your kids. And when I think about my life and how it's gone, and I think about how many of my friends have died already, and I'm only 57, I think I better get ready to deal with change. And I know that I stand here in front of a class of many, many seniors who are writing to me in your three to 20 sentence reaction papers, <laughs> two pages, who the hell was that? You're writing that you're scared. You're writing that you're nervous. Those of you who have written about your relationships in the last couple weeks that I've gotten your relationship stuff, about the relationships that have ended, the ones you're examining, you're writing that you're scared. And I get that you're scared because change is coming to you. And some of it's predictable and some of it's not predictable. Some of it you will see and some of it you won't be able to believe happened when it happens. Some of you have been through some dramatic changes already in your life that you know exactly what I'm talking about. And you don't get a choice about being there when your kid asks you what's Viagra. You don't get a choice about being there when you leave for your job at the end of the semester from a place that you've lived most of your life. You get a choice about how you react to it. People in your life are gonna die. Language is gonna change. Music is going to, I don't know how much fouler it can get, but maybe it's going to go back to being golly gee, gee whiz, wow, that's keen. I don't know, but I doubt it. And it's going to keep going. And you have worked and lived around older people, people my age, who look at people your age and say, these damn kids, how can you trust the world? How's it going to be? Have you heard that? That there's something wrong with you all? And I would have you say, no. No, there's always been something wrong with some of us all, and there's always been something great about a lot of us all. You know, I talked about dancing in here, I think, last time. I love that part of your change as a generation. I love it. I, I just so wish I, I was young while you're young, because I'd have gone to dances and just danced, like you do. You go to dances and you just dance. It doesn't matter if you have somebody to dance, you just dance. And I think, wow, I love that about you all. I love how courageous you are. I love that women have a voice and that you're not afraid of it. I'm sad that we as men are still in a place where we can't look at each other and say, hey, dude, I love you. I love you and I love us. I was at a football game a little while back and a dude came and sat in front of me and he had really nice hair. And I thought I wanted to say, man, I, you got nice hair, bro. And you're laughing because I couldn't do it. <laughs> 